Good evening. Welcome, UIC alumni. Thank you for being here tonight. I am Karen Corman, and I have the absolute pleasure of running the University of Illinois at Chicago Alumni Association, our new alumni association. Uh, I'd like to just thank you all for being here. I also want to share with you that we have guests that are online that are joining us. We are live streaming, casting. You'll understand quickly. I don't understand any of this. Um, but we have folks joining us online, so thank you to our alumni and friends that are joining us online this evening. We are excited to have this conversation with you tonight, so I wanted to just... Uh, Take a moment and do a couple of thank yous before we get started, and then I want to talk to you about the agenda, and then we will go forward with our program. So first, I'd like to thank uh, Jeff Warner, who is our friend in digital and creative services at UIC, who is helping us do all of this online engagement. Uh, and also, I'd like to thank the John Marshall Law School, which I'll talk about briefly, but thank you for coming into what will become our 16th college at UIC. Um, they're very supportive of this event, so we are excited about that. And the staff at John Marshall has just been incredible. So we're very, very grateful to them. So let me review the agenda for this evening and let me tell you this is part one. So I'm going to literally whet your appetite. Uh, we're going to just do a little bit of an overview of what's going on at UIC today, give you a slight history, uh, talk to you about your alumni association and how we got here. Then I'm going, the, prior, the main part of the program is to talk to our panelists, not to hear from me. Uh, so that will be the main focus. And then we're going to try and do some question and answer. You will see there are some cups with some cards. I don't have one in front of me. So feel free to write down questions as you think of them. We're doing this purposely to make sure we don't take up the entire evening with Q&A, but want to make sure we are answering your questions and want to make sure that we have the ability, if we don't do it publicly right now, that we get back to you with answers. So please feel free to write down any question about anything regarding UAC or the Alumni Association, because I can't answer all questions in the world but we will certainly try. Uh, after this is over, and this should take about an hour-ish, we will go downstairs to the corner of State and Jackson, just right down the, the elevator bank, and we'll have a lovely cocktail reception there and heavy appetizers. So please enjoy your little boxes. It's like being on a journey with us, so we gave you a journey box like you're on an airplane, <laughs> um, and we're giving you the, the healthy stuff now to, so you can then be ready for the maybe not so healthy stuff later. <laughs> okay, so because this is academia, we're gonna start with a quiz. Can anybody tell me what our freshman class number was in 2018? How many students we, or excuse me, the total student body that we had on campus right now? Just take a guess. I hear 30,000, 30, 37,000, 31, some of you are reading. So 31,683, um, which is super exciting. And if you remember when Mayor Daly opened the campus, the idea was that we had 35,000 students and we are on our way uh, UIC's enrollment has been going up and up and up, and if you've been paying attention to higher education in Illinois, that has not been happening to our other institutions, so we are very excited about our 37% increase. How many first-generation college students do we have, percentage-wise? I've heard 50, I've heard 20, 40, we're at 38%. For, this is for the freshman class of 2018. And Pell Grant eligible, as you know, the mission at UIC is we want to make sure that we are serving all students. Um, so Pell Grant, of course, is if your family makes under $40,000 a year. Uh, so what percentage of our freshman class, class was Pell Grant? 60? 30? 30, 56%. Wow. So we're very, very proud of the fact that we are able to serve our community. And of course, UIC welcomed just 6,000, just 6,000 <laughs> new graduates this past May. So we have 6,000 new members of our family. And we are still considered one of the most diverse campuses in, across the country, which we are also very, very proud of. So rankings. If you hear our chancellor talk, he'll talk a lot about momentum, and that is a word you'll hear us use this evening. Uh, we don't typically like to talk about rankings, but we do now because the rankings are quite good. <laughs> um, so keep reading about those rankings in the paper. Um, these are just a couple of the ones that I chose to highlight. Uh, the second one, the Wall Street Journal, is one of my favorites because we are number seven, uh, just after this university, it's this private college called Harvard. They are number six on the list. Um, and then there's this other university called Stanford, which is number 10. So we like that we're seventh on this <laughs> list. Um, and then again, lots of good news within Cranes and Forbes, and there's more Wall Street Journal. Again, welcome to the John Marshall Law School. 
On August 16th, they will become the 16th college at UIC, which we are incredibly excited about. We are excited to host this event here in their space, which will become UIC space uh, this fall. Growth. So I don't know how people have been on campus lately. Uh, the building on the right, the Engineering Innovation Building, is the first academic building that is being built on campus since 1991. So it's great, we have a new building, uh, but it is the first one in a long time. If you are familiar where University Hall is, across the street was a parking lot that was used primarily by faculty and staff. It is now the academic and residential complex. What is great about this building is the first floor will have um, retail, so they're putting a Starbucks, so as you can imagine, people are very excited about the Starbucks coming. Uh, and then we will have some academic floors, and then there will be residential. This building will open in July, and we will be welcoming our first set of students to live in it this fall. If you are not familiar, UIC launched a master plan. There's a very long video and there's a short video, neither of which we're gonna show you tonight. Um, but I wanted to point it out to you because if you have not been on campus, or if you have been on campus, please take five minutes and look at the short video for the master plan. I believe you'll be quite impressed. Um, and we'd love to hear your feedback. It is really changing the look of UIC. Let's be honest, we still have brutalism as our architecture, um, but it is really opening up and, and trying to make UAC more present as part of the city, incorporating the L's a little bit differently and just uh, the open flow. Just because I like to continue to do bragging statistics, um, you, know, you can certainly read this, but UAC's economic impact in fiscal year 17 was 7.6 billion to the Illinois economy. These are things to be proud of. We, re we really are working hard within the state of Illinois to increase the uh, economic impact within the state of Illinois. Let me spend half a second talking about the history of alumni relations at UAC. I do not want to focus on the past. This is really about the present and then the future. However, it's important to say, how do we get here? And what are we doing here? Why do we now have an alumni association? Didn't we have an alumni association? Wasn't I a member of that alumni association? These are the questions I think you'll be writing down. Um, so we were, we were part of the University of Illinois Alumni Association for many years. It's a 143 old year organization, or it had been. Uh, we opened an office on the west side, which was primarily to service the College of Medicine in 1966. Obviously you are aware, or I'm assuming, of our consolidation. And then we opened a UIC office for the UIA. Um, there was lots of organization changes and assessment and you know, in typical higher education, we had a task force that had a committee to look at what is the best model for alumni relations. That committee came back and said, this is not the right model. Our three universities that make up the University of Illinois system are very distinct, they're very different, the experiences are very different, and they should have alumni associations that support those different experiences. So we, in October of 2017, launched our first alumni association at UIC. Oh, yeah. Yes, let's clap, thank you. <laughs> So I have to also pause and say, we use the word launch, but when I think of a visual launch, I think of a rocket ship going up to the moon and we know it's going to collect moon rocks and take photos. <laughs> we are the Kitty Hawk. <laughs> we are trying to get off the ground. This is really a startup organization. And so that's a little bit uh, challenging because we did have the former alumni association, but as we'll talk about tonight, a lot of that is gone or changed or we are now doing what is right for UIC. So let's talk about that alumni association, and this is the picture from the launch. How do we start this? Well, we asked alumni. So hopefully many of you participated and filled out the all alumni survey. We spent the greater part of a year reaching out, building some wonderful videos for us saying, please take the survey, please tell us what you think, please tell us what you want, um, because this is your alumni association. We just get the privilege of working at it every day. This is an eye chart. Um, but it is also the infographic of the survey and what we found, what we came back to. This is online, this has been in the magazine. We can certainly send you a copy of this, but just wanted to show you we had almost 3,000 people respond. Of course, we always want more, but we were very happy with that response and statistically it was significant. And we learned a lot. We learned a lot about what alumni, what was important. And so we tried to listen. The other thing we did because the UIC office closed, and I want to pause just for a minute to acknowledge Arlene Norsom, who is here with us this evening. Who <laughs> Arlene ran the alumni office at UAC for 15 years. <laughs> I say it with confidence. Um, <laughs> but she um, has been a wonderful mentor and was my former supervisor and I had the privilege to work with Arlene for many years. 
um, and lots of years that were challenging in many ways, uh, just working with the system and trying to figure out what it meant. Um, as the office closed and Arlene left UIC, she retired from UIC, uh, there was a lot of things left in a state of disarray. No communication or terrible communication. And so we needed to understand what that looked like. So we put together some founding committees. We asked some key alumni to help us engage and help us really do this roll up your sleeves, deep dive, tell us what you're hearing, let people yell at us, that's okay. We need to understand the pulse. We need to understand where people are at. So we asked these committees to really assess the current situation, help us define what success looks like, what does that mean? How can we strengthen each area? Which areas should we focus on? Um, how do we determine what the best practices look like? And then create ultimately recommendations and, and our panel will talk a little bit more about these recommendations and about their work on the, on the founding committees. I mentioned before that we are really a startup organization. Um, and so it's been an interesting um, adventure as we pulled together people because it's not as if we had this all in place and the structure in place. It's really been a ride together. Where we've been building this together. So the committees were broken up into four different areas. Awards and traditions, which I know Julio will touch upon in a little bit. Um, our college and unit, all of our colleges and units had alumni boards. I know we have several alumni board leaders here with us this evening. They can attest and will tell you personally how challenging it has been not having communications and uh, information. And so we really do need to do a deep dive to understand what that looked like. And then what was happening with our students as they were getting ready to graduate? How are we connecting? How weren't we connecting? What could we do different? And then how do we, from an executive committee level, look at our leadership and what the structure of the Alumni Association ultimately should be? So we have a very small but mighty team that I'm very, very proud of. They work very hard. None of them, except for me, signed up for this. <laughs> um, and so they didn't quite know what they were getting into, so you could ask them those questions later, too. Um, but we have a couple people. Wendy, I don't know where our special events folks went. Are they in the room? They're hiding. Um, but I'm very, very proud of the team and all of the great work that they have done. So I wanted to show you the very small but mighty and powerful team. OK, let me turn it over to our panel so we can talk about where we're going. I hope that you feel pride in UIC. I hope that you feel the momentum that we feel on campus every day um, and that we get to experience. I am very, very grateful to be joined by three wonderful alumni tonight. And I'll ask them to give you just a little bit more about their backgrounds as they answer some questions. But let me start on the, your right, <laughs> um, at the end on your right, uh, with Julio Nolasco, who is a 2002 graduate. Among his many, many student leadership activities at UIC, Julio is a former president of the Student Alumni League. I know we have some former Student Alumni League and Student Alumni Association members here. Um, he was the assembly speaker for the undergraduate student government. He was inducted into the Activities Honorary Society. He was a member of the Puerto, Rico, Puerto Rican Student Association. He's also a former homecoming king. <laughs> he didn't wear his tiara tonight, but he has one. <laughs> yeah. um, and currently, Julio serves as the chair of our student to recent alumni engagement committee, and he also serves on the awards committee. So welcome, Julio. <laughs> Kristen Kepnick is a two-time graduate of UIC. Uh, she is a, a, double, a doubly loyal alumna, as we like to say. She also works at UIC as the Associate Director of Engagement and Part Participation in the College of H Applied Health Sciences. This is her second time she has worked at UIC. So she has a really great knowledge base, and we've asked her to come this evening to talk about not only that she was active as a student leader, she was involved in the College of Business Alumni Board in the past, um, but to talk about her experience being on campus, what the vibe is like, and how it has changed a little bit in the last few years. So welcome, Kristen. <laughs> and last, but certainly not least, um, our founding board chair, Bill Merchants, is a 1979 graduate, and it can easily be said that Bill is one of our most passionate and dedicated alumni from UIC. Bill is a former star player on UIC's men's basketball team. He also still has season tickets and attends almost every home and away basketball game that he can. Uh, he is uh, one of the first, was the first uh, scholarship recipient for basketball at UIC. Additionally, Bill has served on both the former U of I Alumni Association Board of Directors and is currently a life member of the University of Illinois Foundation Board of Directors. I am especially grateful for all of Bill's contributions and dedication as we were building the UICAA, so please help me welcome Bill.
Okay, panelists, it's all you. <laughs> so Bill, let me start with you. <laughs> um, in the spring of 2017, and as a reminder, I was hired in October of 2017, the chancellor asked you to help build the UACAA. Can you tell us about that and why you ultimately said yes? I'd be happy to share that story with you. <clears throat> um, as a member of the, the foundation board and at that time the Alumni Association board, um, th there were changes that were occurring and the president gave the chancellors the green light to create their own alumni associations. And the chancellor looked around and um, was, was uh, assessing his strengths and weaknesses and looking for someone who knew the system, who knew the foundation, who knew the Alumni Association, and, and to him, most importantly, was an entrepreneur. So my, my business background is, um, is quite entrepreneurial. I started uh, two or three different software businesses. I uh, sold my first one in 1990. I sold the last one in 2007, and uh, then moved on to uh, private equity investment and assessing early stage companies and um, um, investing and in, in, in helping young startups be successful. So the chancellor invited me to, to uh, take on this opportunity and you know that was when in the spring of 17, right? Yeah, it took until, um, until Karen was hired actually in October for me to agree to do it um, because I, I, I knew how, how much work it was going to be. I knew how many hours it was going to take um, I knew it was going to take patience that I didn't possess at, at that point in time. And um, I, I just kept going back to it and shaking my head. And, and you know, he could keep coming back to me and shaking his head. And if you know anything about our chancellor, Dr. Michael Amaridis, he's, he's very persuasive. And uh, frankly, I, he's, he's a terrific leader. And... Um, you know, we've seen over the years, leaders come and leaders go, and, and he's, he's, boy, he's a top-notch leader. And those leaders come and go. But you know, where do we get our degrees from? UFC. Leaders come and leaders go, and I'm still here. And leaders come and leaders go, and I'm still here, and we're still here, right? And. Um, you know, someday those leaders will also leave, but we're still all going to be here, and we all have an affinity to, to, to the experiences that we had here. And I thought, well, if I can actually put the time and effort into it and, and help organize and, and invent something that didn't exist um, when I came and leave it better than, than when I started, well, you know what, that would be a pretty rewarding experience. So that's, that's why I decided to do it. Thanks. Thank you. Julio, I'm going to turn to you. Can you please tell us about your UAC experience and what it meant to you and how that led to you getting involved with our founding committees? Sure. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Good evening. Um, so where do I begin? My story is probably the same story of a lot of our students that have come to UAC, um, first generation uh, student first uh, <laughs> to graduate from college for my whole family, um, and also a Pell Grant recipient and you know it's like to say this it kind of like a little bit hurts me because I, I love UIC but when I first decided to come to UIC UIC actually was not my first choice and maybe that's kind of how it was for a lot of people but I actually wanted to go to U of I and do engineering and but I was actually like afraid to like leave home so I was like well I'll go to UIC for a couple years get a couple classes, everything under my belt, and in theory, it should all transfer, and go downstate when I'm ready. So I came to UIC, and guess what? I can't stand the calculus classes, the pre-cal classes, basically what you're supposed to be able to love, and I'm like, okay, well, I'm here, I'm gonna make the best of where I'm at, and lo and behold, once I kind of you know had that little paradigm shift of, it wasn't where I wanted to be, but making it like home and kind of making the best of a situation. I just got started getting plugged in on campus orgs, um, student government, the student senate, gosh, uh, the marketing association, anything, anything you can think of, all while being a commuter student. 
And so um, life got really hard trying to commute and be involved. So then I ended up moving to campus. So I ended up, instead of taking a half an hour train ride in the morning, now I live on campus. So basically I devoted all that time to more, to being plugged in on campus. And that's where I joined the Student Alumni League. And I had the privilege of being a student and being mentored by Arlene and Karen. So during my first, during Karen's first stint, I met her as a student while I was in the Student Alumni League. And that experience working with the Alumni Association as a student and meeting alumni and understanding the importance of, it's not, you know, you have that mentality as a student that, oh, it's all about giving money. And, you know, it's all for old people and all they want is my money. So, but the reality of it is, is that it's connection. It's, it builds relationships. It, it just goes so much further and beyond that. So because I was afforded a, a quality education and being plugged in at UIC and being on campus and being overly involved, that kind of created a different experience for me that I was like, I'm so much better and enriched because of being at UIC and having been there. And my whole passion was, I want to make sure that current students are having the same experience that I got to have whether you know being involved in a student org or doing something fun like homecoming. I would have never thought that I would have been homecoming king, but <laughs> yeah, the nerd beat out the frat guy, which, <laughs> yeah, go nerds. Um, but honestly, um, I just want, that's really what my passion is and why I came back is because I just have that love of, that love for UIC and love for our city and, and you know, Everybody's like, oh, it's, it's a city college. No, actually, it's a state university in the city. So let's, let's get that, you know, correct. And as a student, I kind of felt like I was ahead of my time with, you know, bleeding UIC Red and knowing our fight song and all that other stuff. But now I, I love to go back to campus and see that, you know, how much further we've come. And there's a lot of room for, for to go and being plugged in now is we're on the ground floor. So we're building the Alumni Association the way that everybody wants it to be. So it's not status quo like how it used to be. Well, this is how we did it for 143 years. No, we get the opportunity to build it the way that we want it to work. And that's why I wanted to come back is to make sure that what we're working on and what we're going to do is the way it should be for our campus and the way that it'll benefit um, our current students and all of our alumni. Thanks, Julio. <laughs> well done. Maybe later you'll sing the school song for us too. <laughs> I want him to wear the crown. Yeah, we're, I want we're, to wearing the crown. crown. <laughs> we have a surprise. Um, <laughs> That's a good um, oh, we should have put up pictures of the student days. Sorry, I didn't think of that. Um, Kristen, uh, this is the second time that you have worked on campus. Can you please share with us your observations about UIC today and the current vibe around alumni relations? Sure. Um, I've thought a lot about what to say in response to this question. And I think as I sit here, what has changed is what you just heard. You know, I think um, my experience as a student and also when I, I ended up working at UIC right out of my undergrad, which it was fortunate for that opportunity, but I don't think it allowed me to appreciate the opportunity. And I think, um, yeah, I worked for eight years at UIC and then it was kind of time to see the rest of the world. So I moved on. And then, you know, you often appreciate things after they're no longer in your life. So um, about two years ago, I started to think maybe I'd try to, I was still working in higher ed, thinking maybe I'd try to find another position on campus. And um, then I had the opportunity to attend the Ignite event, which we talked about before, and you saw the photo of the lighting of the flame. and it was very apparent at that event that a lot had changed on campus. So the energy and enthusiasm, obviously it was an exciting event. We were launching something new, both the campaign and the alumni association. But um, that really, I felt like that night I was like, okay, I'm gonna really take this job hunt seriously. And the pleasant surprise was that that energy is, is evident on campus, I think every day. Walking around campus, Previously, I never saw people wearing UIC gear or, um, you know, getting as involved as I see now. So I think um, that all comes from our leadership, both the chancellor, Karen, Bill, 
I think, um, you know, the, I always feel working with alumni that um, you can't create a good experience as a student, but we can create those positive student experiences and then people want, it's natural for people to want to stay engaged and involved as alumni. So luckily, a lot of people did have great experience as students. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think now it's just, I think there's a lot more of a seamless kind of transition from being engaged on campus. And a lot of things have changed. You know, I don't think UIC is quite the commuter school that it was, but I was a commuter student and I think um, you know, there were still those opportunities to be engaged, but um, a lot has changed. And so the opportunity even for current students to get involved with alumni is um, being built up. Uh, and I think just that pride and leadership are the two big changes. Great, Great thank you. And I hear some city noises in the background, so. <laughs> <laughs> so yay. Thanks, Kristen. Sure. So Julio, I'm gonna turn back to you to ask about the founding committee. <laughs> my, my kind of story going back to, um, kind of to cover what Kristen said is, uh, once I graduated, kind of you leave and you kind of go your own way and I kind of stayed plugged in as an alumni here and there, um, but then kind of fell away. Really wasn't back to campus for many, many, many years. And um, luckily, Karen and I, you know, they created Facebook and I was able to keep in touch with Karen even though she was gone and she had announced that she was coming back. They were doing Ignite and I sent her a DM, I think almost immediately said, whatever you want me to do, I am there because I'm at, I, I wanna plug back in and I wanna help out wherever we're at because of the opportunities. So here we are, I'm on two committees and uh, the, the one committee that I'm on is the Awards and Traditions Committee and I'm not sure if anybody's here from that committee or not. I'm not the chair of it, but I serve on it, and Cal, our chair, um, has been really instrumental in building this committee. So we had basically no structure with it, and the whole point of the Awards and Traditions Committee is basically we work to acknowledge all of our alumni, so all of you guys. We want to recognize you for your outstanding achievements, whatever it is that you guys are working on in your career fields. We want to know, we want to recognize you because what you're doing is important and, and also can basically kind of mentor those that are kind of up and coming. They can look to you as an example of what they can achieve themselves. So um, with the help of Cal, we put a process into place. We have had our first awards ceremony last October. And uh, we recognized some very awesome people and the joke with the committee is, uh, you know, we read these nominations from people and you're like, oh man, what am I doing with my life? These people are, you know, this guy is in, you know, he's in Africa and he's helping the poor and he's, you know, digging wells and I'm, you know, just driving to work every day, sipping my, you know, Dunkin' Donuts or whatever. Uh, but not to diminish that, but basically, so that's what our first committee is and um, the Awards and Traditions Committee and, you know, a lot of you know people that are doing outstanding things, but we don't know them. So, you know, that's, that's I'm segueing into something a future that we're gonna talk about, but you know, that's kind of a way to kind of get plugged in is to help us recognize those that you know, because we can't possibly know everybody, but everybody knows somebody. So that's our first committee. And the second committee that I'm on is the Student to Recent Alumni Engagement Committee. Got that right. The joke with that is that every week it seemed like we had a different name. Every time we met, our committee had a different name because we were still trying to find ourselves. We were still trying to define what our role was in, in, on the UICAA. And so um, I actually have been privileged enough to chair that committee since October of 17, maybe January-ish of 18. And basically, this committee is basically where my passion is for UIC, is building uh, the relationships with our current students and as, as they are on campus engaging them so that when they graduate and become alumni, that they remember what they had, kind of like what you said. That I personally didn't realize what I had until I left campus and, and moved on. but. And our problem was, we discovered, was we're trying to engage students as they're filling out their graduation paperwork. And, you know, by then it's too late. 
we want to engage them from day one. So what we under that premise is we created some events that actually never existed before. Um, one of them was the freshman convocation event. And that, uh, that one actually already existed, but we didn't have a speaker at it. So we decided to bring in a recent graduate to kind of encourage and mentor all these brand new wide-eyed freshmen that are coming in. And you guys all remember coming in and being like, oh my gosh, you know. And so I think it was an awesome success. We've been invited to come back again and kind of encourage them. And we was also come up with some recent alumni events. So everybody asks, what's a recent alumni? So basically, it's somebody who's graduated within the last 10 years. And we had Spirits with Sparky last September at Ace Bounce House. And we had about I don't know, 60, maybe 60 people, uh, student, former students attend. And that was a fun time. And then two weeks ago, we had in a recent alumni happy hour at uh, Punchbowl Social in West Loop in Fulton Market. And I think, I don't know, 100, 120, 120 recent alumni came. And it was a fantastic networking event. I mean, there's tacos. You can't go wrong when there's tacos. <laughs> <laughs> um, but basically, um, all, all, our goal, though, is to just raise vis the visibility of the Alumni Association on campus, engage them right on, but not, so, not also recent alumni, but alumni that are past. I always joke that I'm, I've aged out because I'm, I graduated in 02, so I'm 17 years out, so I'm not recent anymore. But um, former students or alumni, bring them back too. So let's create events that'll, bring, that'll draw them back, homecoming. What can we do to just kind of bring people back, keep them plugged in, find ways for everybody to volunteer in their own way, not necessarily, you know, if you're not a person that does committee work, maybe you like to be a mentor, maybe you like to do whatever. So that's kind of like what we're working on, trying to find new ways to engage students and engage alumni and bring them back to campus and kind of pay it forward, so to speak. So I had the privilege of having an awesome experience, now I'm gonna pay it forward and try to help the next generation of students have that great experience so that they can put it forward to next generation students. Thanks, Julio. You're welcome. Um, I also want to point out that Jim Droziak is with us this evening, and he's the chair of the college and unit uh, committee. So I know that we have several college leaders here with us this evening. So go see Jim <laughs> and ask questions specifically about that committee if you would like, or any of us, of course. But so thank you uh, to you, Jim, and to all our other founding committee members that are here uh, with us this evening. Okay, Bill, so we've been working together for a little while now, and I'm very grateful for all of your time, dedication, and support. As Bill said, this was not a, a small task to take on. We have the recommendations from our founding committees. We have listened to alumni, both through the survey and in person. So can you please share with us what's next for the UACAA? Do I have slides? You have slides, and he has slides. <laughs> All right, if you've heard me speak before, you know that I try and differentiate between the sausage making and the sausage selling. Wendy's laughing. <laughs> um, you know, when, when, we, when we bring the alumni together, we're really supposed to be selling the sausage, right? Like we did at the kickoff of the Ignite campaign. We were selling, but we didn't really have any sausage. <laughs> but we were selling. So it's taken 18 months or so to, um, to, to you know, take an inventory and, and really dig into what the, you know, the operating issues were, take inventory of, of, of where the college units were, what was going on with the awards programs. You know, after, um, after very, very little, no offense to, to Arlene, of course, but with very little investment over 50 years, in the Alumni Association for UICC or UIC, um, you know, we had to make a decision where we were gonna organize and where we were gonna invest. And um, I led the, the conversation that, you know, when you have kind of zero mind share of people that you've let go for 20 years and you really haven't reached out to them and you haven't organized much around them as a, as a university, as a UIC, 
Um, it'll cost a lot of time and a lot of money and a lot of staff to actually go after and try and win those people back. However, if we have people like Julio who are focused on on the, the students that are right now either on campus and who have been uh, recently left campus, our recent grads, we probably have a greater um, you know, probability of success of, of, of winning them and, and, and keeping them and getting them engaged in an organization. So um, at the risk of, of sounding like a benevolent dictator, which is, which is uh, you know, I only had a couple of, of, of um, requirements, um, terms that, that I negotiated with the chancellor. And one was to be a benevolent dictator for about 18 months or so. Um, you know, we, I, we all knew, we all felt, we didn't want to create another UIAA the way it was organized in its somewhat um, siloed structure um, what we really wanted to do was put together an organization that would be an overlay, that, that would complement and overlay the entire university. The enti all the pieces of the university that the uh, chancellor has organized under his cabinet. So if you look at this, this, this is a kind of a bubble solution to all of the, the we grouped together all the issues that uh, were important in building an alumni association, a modern alumni association. And I'm just really using this to show you that, that it, what, we weren't just kind of making up, up as we went along, and we didn't just kind of, you know, willy-nilly it. There was a lot of work in digging into and understanding what worked, what didn't work, what could work, um, in, in trying to organize and, and build a, a um, an organization that really is about alumni interacting with professors, faculty, staff, coaches, in a very meaningful way. And you know, it starts, it, it's all about the bottom up, so it's all about the students interacting with faculty, and then it's to, to carry forward to have alumni being able to interact and participate in all the different colleges, um, and I call it more of a, a of a groundswell, a bottom up organization. But you know, at the top, you really have to have buy in from the chancellor and, and his cabinet, and and then all the deans, all you know, throughout the whole organization. Um, and this 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 uh, organization is, is one that I think uh, we can accomplish. Uh, we can accomplish all of that. So um, I won't go into it, all the details under here, but the next slide is, a, is about our strategy. And of course, we, uh, we have all these amazing numbers, 260 or 70,000 alumni. Are they addressable? Can we, can we contact them? I mean, that's a daunting task. So, so then I, you know, we started looking at, well, what about the newest alumni that we have? The, are we in touch with them? Well, no, we turn their emails off after 30 days after they graduate. So, well, okay, well, where's their forwarding address? Well, we don't keep their forwarding address. We don't ask them for a forwarding address. And, you know, I mean, this is where we were, right? Um, so it's, it's to focus on, you know, stop, stop the losing. Let, let, let's, let's keep contact with, with uh, our immediate students and alumni and, and kind of build it that way. Uh, there's something up here about a 501c3. I don't know if, if, if you're into taxes or charitable giving, there are some uh, revenue streams that the government uh, likes because they get 40% tax on those, right? So uh, legally, technically, if I go into the bookstore and I buy a nice UIC sweatshirt, you know, legally they're supposed to pay 40% tax on, on that purchase under UBIT. But there are, there are loyalty programs like travel programs, credit card programs, insurance programs that the UIAA had offered uh, but really didn't integrate them into UIC. Well, we have the opportunity to take all of those in-house and, uh, and run all of those exclusively for the benefit of UIC going forward. Um, the next one is is as we developed the founding committees, um, which are 
Go to, go to the next one. The, so this committee structure is really about, uh, the, these are the founding committees, three plus two, I think, are up there. So we, Jose, um, Julio talked about the awards and traditions and about the college units a little bit and the recent alumni engagement. Uh, you will see us also now investing in outreach and in uh, career services as additional committees. So, so we're looking for people who either have that experience or have that interest in participating. So we're recruiting right now, looking for alumni uh, to come in and help with us. Um, when, when, you, when you take a look at everything that's going on here, a bottom-up approach, you need the support from, the, from the, uh, the chancellor's office, his cabinet, the deans. What we really have going on here is, is, is a, a huge behavioral change in, in updating the culture at UIC. And you know, that doesn't happen overnight. That's gonna take some time. Um, but we need the patience. We need, to, we need to have the focus, and I think we do with this staff, but we need to have the patience to know that it's gonna take you know, 10 years of 6,000 students graduating. Boy, that, that's 60,000. That's, that's my target, that's what I'm after. If we could have a good percentage of those 60,000 participating 10 years from now. Um, I think that, um, that our next step here with, these operating, uh, with this operating board in running these committees is gonna be very important. Above that, go back one. Above that, that there is a structure. There's, there's a, a, a small uh, executive committee that I pulled together to really um, run all of those committees. Ed Cohen, you, many of you have, have worked with or, or participated or volunteered with Ed on the, um, on the cab in the past. Ed has agreed to step up and, and, and really be the leader volunteer leader for all these committees. Uh, we are, uh, we're gonna have a, an advocacy role, and I've talked with Peter Scozzi. He's been our, he was the advocacy um, leader at the UIAA for UIC, so he's, he's willing to step up and, and uh, help us out and lead advocacy. Um, we're uh, recruiting right now for a loyalty chair, so that's, we're looking for an alum, NUS or alumna, that have, uh, that have experience in this travel industry, credit card industry, somebody who has you know, really good, deep experience in understanding how these programs run. Um, I've recruited a legal chair because we intend to create our own 501c3 as a, a standalone charitable organization solely for the purpose of, of benefiting UIC. Have no staff. Um, and uh, all the staff are university employees. That's a big change from uh, how the UIAA used to work. And um, uh, then we'll have a leadership chair. So, so this, this executive board will, will help staff oversee and organize an operating board, which Ed Cohen is responsible for. Um, and the leadership person will, will help us recruit and staff a leadership board. And what we're looking for are, are people who are, who are prominent in their industries, having flown through, uh, flowed through their colleges, who are influential, who um, will be terrific UIC ambassadors, who are looking for uh, a relationship and an interaction with UIC at an executive level that, uh, that there's a, a clear value proposition for them to get engaged and, and, and spend a couple of years being very active in, uh, in promoting UIC. Uh, and we're developing that uh, leadership board right now. I guess the last piece of this is, is that uh, I've asked and, and have had acceptance from many of our past executives at UIC. So um, uh, Barbara Henley, uh, has agreed to, to be an advisor of mine uh, as an example in student affairs. Um, and I've got uh, three or four others that have already agreed uh, to, to advise the chair on how UIC works without really having to, to go into uh, the, the current staff. The, um, the need there is um, 
we will then we will then find um, all of those the uh, Michael's executives will give us somebody to work with as an advisor. So the whole idea here is to create an overlap organization that won't duplicate any headcount and won't duplicate any spending, but will complement everything that the chancellor has going on on the UIC campus. And it will all be driven by, and we will we'll organize and reward uh, the, the participation of alumni with faculty, staff, and, and coaches as we go forward. So that's, uh, I, I, I think that's all I, I have to say, and we'll get to Q&A um, later. Thanks. Great, thank you so much, Bill. So this is really my last question, then we can turn to Q&A. So Bill has just shared the plan of where we're going. Um, for each of you, can you share with us a couple of thoughts on how you think alumni in this room can help us get there, um, and why you may recommend them getting involved? Julio, we'll start with you because you made that face. <laughs> <laughs> um, gosh, that's such a, a loaded question because there's so many ways to be involved. You can be involved a little bit. You can be involved a lot. Um, you know, simple things like I have a UIC pen that I have at work, and I always tell people, if you take it, I know you took it because this is the only UIC pen here. <laughs> but everybody knows I'm involved in UIC. Um, wearing logo wear, UIC, I, I have a UIC sweatshirt, there are two hoodies or whatever, you know, coming to the game, what, whatever. There's many volunteer opportunities. Um, if you're passionate like me about, you know, in getting students involved, you can volunteer in that committee. There's a committee for everything, whatever you're passionate about. Maybe you're not a committee person. Maybe you are a talker, you like to talk. You know, we have, one of the things we were talking about is um, connecting our students with people of certain fields and maybe having them be a mentor, mentee relationship, maybe that's something that you want to do. You know, we're still in the developing plans, but maybe you're the type of person you just have tons of ideas, right? Right now you're sitting here and your brain is, the, everything's cranking out and you're, you have all sorts of ideas. That's a way to volunteer too. So basically, Whatever you're passionate about, there is a way to volunteer and be involved in it. You know, coming to events on campus, a basketball game, just coming and showing support. However you want to be engaged, I think is there's a way for you to do it and just come and ask us. And there's definitely a way to be plugged in if that's what you want to do. Thank you. Kristen? Well, I'll give a plug for, um, I don't want to steal anybody's thunder, but there are a lot of opportunities at the UICAA level but the colleges also have specific opportunities. So there's somebody with a role like mine in every one of the colleges. So if you wanna do something more specific to your professional field or you really specifically wanna work with business students or CADA students or engineering students, I would encourage you to find out who your college's person is and get in touch with them um, because we're all um, working in coordination with Karen's team, but also on the ground in our own colleges, really specifically looking at what our students need, and we want to also serve the alumni. So, um, you know, you, if you want to connect with students, definitely get in touch with your colleges person. But also, um, I've been here back a year. Some of the people in this roles have been here longer and probably have a little more uh, roadmap. But I'm still really interested in hearing what the alumni want. So that's the other benefit to being involved. You know, you can kind of help steer the bus. <laughs> um, and then I think the other thing that is really helpful to us is sharing your awesome news and accomplishments so that we can spread the word because that also helps elevate the college's profiles, UIC's profiles, all of your profiles. So like, help us help you. <laughs> and um, just keep connected, uh, even if it's just dropping an email or making a phone call. Thank you. Um, as Kristen mentioned, she has many colleagues across UIC that also spend part of their job, not usually their whole job, doing right. alumni relations. <laughs> um, and we're very grateful for them. We really rely on their partnership, and, and they are really part of our team. So, so thank you for, for that. Well, we're grateful for you guys, too. <laughs> See, we love so each other. It's nice. We all have our own kind of initiatives, but then we are coordinated at the university level to some respect. So, Which has been a change. I mean, it's yeah. been a, quite a change, which has been great. So mm -hmm. thank you for your partnership. Mm -hmm. Bill? Yeah, I, I think um, we all have to have realistic expectations. 
when that chart with the balloons and the staff was up there, there was one person up there 18 months ago, and now there are probably six people mm -hmm. on this team. And I, I've tried to impress upon the chancellor that, look, you know, we can have all the good ideas in the world and we can make all the promises in the world, but if we don't have staff, because we're not, well, you're staff, but, <laughs> but Julio and I aren't working here every day. If we don't have staff to actually catch the inquiries and catch the requests, and if we don't get organized the right way and, and make the right investments, look, you know, uh, you know, it, it won't be as successful. So we just hired a new vice chancellor for advancement. And advancement now, one of the big differences here, advancement is, is the combination of donor relations, alumni relations, and then the communications that to, to those that, that kind of tie it all together. Uh, that person will start in uh, August, I think. So not on board yet, uh, but Tom Wamsley has terrific experience coming from the University of Michigan and they have a they, they've got quite a uh, an alumni organization association there, so uh, so he has experience working uh, actually leading I think advancement at the, at the Ross School at Michigan of of, ex of of working this and balancing these resources, um, and I think that's that's going to be that's key that's strategic and we really look forward to having Tom come in, but we have to have realistic expectations. So don't get frustrated. Don't think that you know if somebody isn't following up with you right away that that uh, we're not interested. There's a very very small team of, of people that are working, you know, day in day out here at, at the staff, and they're working crazy hours. And um, I, I've been in there with them, um, and I support everything that they're doing. So we need to have realistic expectations of how much we can actually accomplish um, until staff grows. Thank you, and thank care. you for that. Oh, please. Can I add one more thing? Um, I know I've spoken a lot today. Um, w one thing that we can all do, and it's free, and I feel like everybody in this room wouldn't be here if they didn't have some type of passion or feel a certain kind of way towards UIC, is just spreading the good word about UIC and just telling people, yeah, you know, um, I went to UIC, this was my experience. I had a coworker whose daughter was going to she graduated high school and didn't know where to go. And she came to work and I'm like, hey, well, did you think about UIC? And she was like, no, I didn't. And um, I actually brought her uh, to a campus tour just because I love UIC and I wanted her to have that same experience. So just stuff like that, it's very simple. You, don't, you can do that from the comfort of your own home, email, Facebook, whatever. So it's very easy to, to promote and get involved, even if it's just like that, so. Thank I you. I you. actually wrote down, spread the good word. So that's oh. perfect timing. <laughs> um, so thank you for that. I'm, we're going to turn it to Q&A. And I'm going to ask Wendy, if you have questions or if you need cards to write down any questions, please do so and pass them to her. I wanted to mention, and when we go down to the reception afterwards, we have UIC alumni pins. Uh, I think Julio is wearing one. And we also have these um, red circle pins. If you are not familiar, this pin was designed, and it is all over campus now, the branding image, um, paying respect to the circle campus. So when you see the UIC circle logo, this is why. We are paying respect to the UIC circle campus, which I know many people will say I graduated from circle. So there you go. We see it every day, and we respect and honor that history. Thank you to our panelists as we're going to go into questions. That doesn't mean I'm not going to direct the questions at you. Um, <laughs> but uh, as Wendy uh, brings up, and you can certainly ask more and add more on. And do I have to put on glasses? Okay. So the question is, and not surprised by this question, so I'm going to turn this to Bill. Um, I am a life member, paid life member of the University of Illinois Alumni Association. What does that mean, and what am I getting for it? And this, there's two parts to this question, so I'm going to start there. <laughs> uh, well, or do you want me, um, let me, uh, Okay, let me re keep reading. With a no-pay membership, because we do not have a membership program with the UICAA, um, what does the status of my paid UIA membership mean? So, two-part question. Well, what's the value proposition? I, I, I think the value proposition for life members, um, and by the way, I'm a life member, I'm a life member. I, I'm a I, life member. Who else is a life member? John, are you a life member? So thank Who's you for your loyalty. <laughs> How many life members out there? Yeah, right. Okay. So thank I you for a, your loyalty. I have, a, I have a, a gold UIC card with a big 
orange eye on it. Oh, no. <laughs> we no longer have those available in case hey, you're man, interested. I, hey, 79, okay? <laughs> 79, okay. Um, look, we, uh, we have the, the information that I have when I was on the board at the Alumni Association. We have about 13,000 life members uh, that were signed up before the membership program, before the university asked us to end a, a for pay membership program or a fee based membership program. And there is, um, there is an amount of money that is yet to be determined, it has to be audited, that the UIAA currently has that, that I think should be tied to those life memberships. And, and so we don't know exactly what the num numbers are, but we're going through a process, we're going to evaluate that, and, and there will be an audit on that. Um, if there is anything left in the life membership endowment, that will simply be transferred over to the foundation in on account for the UIAA or UICAA. So the Alumni Association here at UIC will get the benefit of, of those funds. Typically those funds were not supposed to be spent, but the interest or the earnings off of those funds could have been spent for programs. Um, and that's the way that it works. Uh, what do you get for that? Well, personally, you probably get to participate and interact with your colleges or your majors uh, alumni team. I'd encourage you to do that. I think we have uh, access to the rec center down here for alumni. We have access to the um, library for alumni. Um, yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, and um, I hope I answered your question. Yes. Good. Great. Um, Kristen, I'm going to ask you to answer this question. So how do you plan to work with colleges that have that are independently doing their own thing with paid staff? I'm not sure I understand the question. <laughs> so I think what the question is saying is how, how do we work with the colleges to make sure that we are, there's a synergy you between as the, alumni association. As the alumni association and how do we work together currently to make sure there's not duplication efforts and that we are not stepping each other's toes and we're not over communicating to alumni or over inviting or over asking. Yeah. So. Um, as we kind of alluded to before, there's a very different scenario in each of the colleges. Applied Health Sciences, my role was vacant for eight years. I am one person, 50% of my job is alumni relations. Some of the other colleges have much more um, developed um, plans and programs in place. Um, but as far as coordination goes, I think that's one benefit of having uh, slim staffing. There's not a lot of duplication of efforts because we're all doing everything we can. Um, but we meet on a monthly basis with um, Wendy and Karen and um, communicate about the different things that are going on in our colleges. They are very communicative about the programs they're planning. And um, often we collaborate. Um, we have the Health Sciences alumni event coming up next month. Um, we've all been... Uh, involved in um, having input in that and helping promote it. So um, I, I would say it's pretty coordinated, and I don't know that it's by any um, great systematic <laughs> means, but um, just the fact that most people in these roles like to communicate and they're very good about sharing what they have going on. So um, I think it, I feel like it's it's coordinated. There's not I haven't known of any duplication. We're all doing as much as we can, so I think that'll be a good day when there's a problem of duplicating uh, efforts. <laughs> we try actually hard to over-communicate and, yeah. <laughs> and have these monthly staff meetings, and we try hard to overshare because as we build the organization, we want to be transparent, and Bill talked about this. We want to be very transparent, and we need our key partners in the colleges and across the units to really help us build together. And, and frankly, we expect them to turn around and say, what, uh, hold on, we don't agree, what's going on here? Um, if there's things that we missed up, so it's important that we have that partnership. Yeah, and I think from my perspective, um, I really view them as a resource, so a lot of times I'll have an idea, you know, something that I think might be of value to our alumni, and I can get in touch with Wendy and find out if other colleges have done something similar, or um, if there's something that they might be able to help amplify our efforts. Um, so I think that it's really, Nice to have, you know, I don't have to call 15 other people in each college. I can communicate with the central team. Great. 
So thank you for all of these wonderful questions. We've gotten quite a few, so I'm going to do two more just in interest of time. I never want to be the person standing between you and you know, <laughs> good appetizers and things like that. So we will still respond to all of the questions, and as I mentioned, there's founding committee members here and our staff is here, so we're happy to continue to engage. Um, but I also do want to be sensitive to your time, and I want to make sure you have time to network. While this classroom space is beautiful, it doesn't allow for the kind of networking that downstairs will. So uh, let me ask two more questions, and I don't know who wants this. Maybe you're going to say me. Um, the recent graduates might have a very different value proposition with the university. Considering quality versus quantity, is there a strategy to identify the special desires of the special, of the special group? Can you repeat the question? <laughs> <laughs> So I, I, essentially, I believe the question is saying that the recent graduates probably have a different value proposition of why they'd want to stay engaged and stay involved and continue to, to care. Um, is there a strategy for us to engage differently uh, with, with the recent graduates versus the masses alumni body? And I would actually say it's not just recent graduates. We look at the different decades and experiences. If I talked to five of you in this room, you would tell me very different experiences about your time at UIC depending on what college you went to, depending on what, what time you went to school at UAC, what you even called UAC at the time. Um, so we do try and segment. Um, I'll try to field this one. We, I'm not sure how many of you in this room actually um, participated in the survey that, okay, so like oh, thank everybody. You. Thank you, thank okay. you. Okay, yes, thank you so much. Um, now, I didn't read all 200 pages of the results. Wendy did. You can ask her. <laughs> <laughs> but what I do know is um, exactly kind of like what Karen was saying is that we're kind of building from the ground up, and that survey was kind of like the foundation of what we wanted to achieve when we launched the UICAA. And one of it is, um, like Karen said, maybe if you graduated back when it was uh, Circle, you're, you want your alumni association to work in a certain way for you. Um, if you graduated, you know, when it was the east side versus the west side and, you know, that, um, you want it to work differently for you. But our, our committee, what we've been doing with these recent alumni events, it's not just, hey, let's get together and have a good time, but we're bringing them together, we're, we're networking with them, and then we're engaging them to say, what can we do? What do you want to do? And I think every time we, we have an event like this, that's also kind of like the goal is to see what do you guys want us to do? What, what can we do to help you? What can we do to serve you? And in the process, serve your former classmates. Um, so I think that it, it's kind of tough because we have how many alumni? 265,000. And you can, you're not going to please everybody, but you can try to work towards finding the compromise for each group, each generation, and, and build it that way so that there is something in it for everybody. I guess that's yeah, the way it, to say it. So let me add also that from the survey, um, we did hear, I think across the board, that alumni really want to be connected to or, or relate to or have an affinity with their, um, with their college and or their major as a secondary. Right, Wendy? Yeah. Okay. So that's loud and clear. We tried to run an event. When was the last event we tried to run? In, uh, on campus at 5.30 on a Thursday. Oh, February. In February. Okay? <laughs> See why it's been rescheduled None to this evening. <laughs> which, which is what we're doing right now. And, and, and the response was, um, tepid. Okay, so I, you know, the, the staff was like, uh, "Oh my God, we've only got four people signed up. What are we gonna do?" <laughs> I said, "But th there's no coin. What do you mean? What are we gonna do? We're gonna cancel it. <laughs> and what we're gonna do is we have to organize to take the alumni association out to the people where they want to congregate. Right? So we need to bring the alumni association to Schaumburg." and to Dalton, and to Oak Brook, I, where you want it, right? Not where I want it, I don't care where. But the point is, we're, we're not gonna run this thing, we're not gonna invest that where you all have to always come into the city at 5.30 when the Eisenhower's under construction, <laughs> and there's a turnover on the Dan Ryan, and you know, 
the president came into town and the Kennedy is shut down, right? I, we can't operate that way. So, so if you look at the different operating committees, the next two coming, one is career and networking, right? Yeah. And what's the fifth one? Outreach and alumni engagement, so Chicago. So, so that's the area. That's, that's our area and, and then regional outreach. So we just ran an event in Washington, D.C. We had about 100 people in Washington. The second event we ran in Washington, D.C. And that's without even John Marshall really being fully engaged on board with us yet. So, so we need to bring the Alumni Association out and then therefore we need to bring who you wanna hear. If you wanna hear the chancellor, if you wanna hear the head basketball coach, if you wanna hear the softball coach's success story. Our baseball team, by the way, is in the NCAAs this weekend. All if right. you wanna, if, you know, if you wanna watch some games, they're going down to Louisville. And, and they, you know, they have a chance. They're down there with Illinois State and uh, Louisville, and um, uh, the fourth team is also from Illinois. Anyway, um, we need to bring it out to you. So, so th that's my re reply on, on how are we balancing, you know, the 20-year alumni and what their needs are and what they think their value proposition is versus the recent alumni and what their needs are. Thank you, and if I could compliment and, and to the committees, I am very grateful because we have received a ton of support from our chancellor, and, and if you have not had the opportunity to talk with him or hear him talk yet, we will make that happen. He's an incredible and inspiring leader, extremely visionary, and he is an incredible reason why UAC has changed the way it has in such a positive way. Um, he has been supportive for us on the staff side, so I'm very pleased to share with you that we just hired um, a new associate director who is in charge of our student to recent alumni engagement, Emily Ann, are you here? Yes, Emily Ann's in the back, um, so please stand. And so this is her third week, um, so, she, so welcome, Emily welcome. Ann. Um, we're very excited to have her join our engagement team, and we are in the final stages of hiring a director of alumni career services. Uh, you may be aware there used to be an alumni career office under the old model. Um, that was something else we heard from the survey very, very clearly that alumni want career services. It is just one person, but we're very excited about uh, the finalists and hopefully that announcement will come out shortly. Um, we also, I've just hired somebody that will focus specifically on Chicago area. As many of you know, the majority of our alumni live in the Chicagoland and within the state of Illinois, but specifically in the Chicagoland area. So we've just hired somebody that will start on June 16th. Um, to come and lead our efforts looking at this exactly to complement how do we segment and how do we market differently. So, And, and let me add, look, the, the way to do it is not in a silo, ignorant of what's going on in student affairs or ignorant of what's happening in the colleges. We partnered with Career Services. Yes, oh yes, all of them, gotta, all the Career Services. confirm this stuff, Yes, right? all, of, all the I don't Career work Services here. in the different colleges. <laughs> <laughs> but we partner with them so and, and they're willing, you know, to to actually uh, see how they can extend their services out a little bit further, you know, for um, for recent alumni a little bit further than they currently are able to do, right? So it's not doing anything to to, to fight with what's going on there. It, it's a partnership. It's an overlay so that we can integrate alumni I into what's happening at, at UIC, right? So and that's a strategy. And that is a key, thank you for mentioning that, because that is a key piece of the strategy that we are working in tandem and in partnership and career services, and there's a couple of colleges that have their own career services offices have been instrumental in the search and helping us find people, but also um, as we move forward, and for those of you that talked to Emily Ann at the reception, she'll tell you the folks she's already met with student affairs um, in just the two and a half weeks she's been here, because we know how important that is for her to establish those relationships um, and work together. So real quickly, the last question is about awards. Um, the question is, will there be plans to highlight accomplished alumni um, on the campus or on the UICAA website? So if nobody wants this, I can take this. So the awards program, uh, Julio briefly mentioned this, and we do have a few folks here that are on the awards uh, committee and can talk a little about that process. It really was building from ground up. Um, as Bill also talked about the advancement model, we are, I call us the new branch of advancement. Um, so it's changing the business model. It's changing how we represent ourselves online, how we communicate out. I hope that you have received, just this January, we launched a UICAA newsletter, which may not sound like a big deal in this day and age, but it was. It was a lot of work for us to get that up and running and to get that into a cadence. 
I am always looking for feedback. So if you don't like it, if it's too long, you hate the colors, tell me. This is the only way we're going to know. <laughs> if you delete it right away, I'd like to know that too and tell me why. Um, so, we, so we are working. In awards, there is a lot of room for us to grow. Uh, under the former Alumni Association, there were 12 award categories that existed at UIC. We just had nominations for four award categories, so we have a whole group of eight that we haven't even touched yet to really understand what that space looks like. We have done an audit on the colleges because we do not want to duplicate the work they're doing. We want to make sure that we are complementing the work they're doing. So that committee has a lot of room to grow for us to figure out how do we continue to acknowledge our accomplished alumni. We did also launch a class notes section when the magazine changed, which is a different conversation. But when the magazine changed, we lost class notes, but it is all online now. So we encourage you to submit class notes. Um, they are updated on a daily basis. And so please tell us. Tell us what you're doing. And that can be life changes. That can be career changes. That can be whatever you want to tell us. We want to hear. Um, so we are working on it. And again, welcome your thoughts and suggestions around that. So again, I want to be sensitive to time uh, because you will all now go to the elevators and go down to the first floor. So <laughs> um, I want to thank our panelists for all of their, their time and their dedication. <laughs> but Julio, actually, I think all three panelists mentioned the word passion. And whenever we hire somebody at UIC, that is the word we come back to. You cannot teach passion. You either have it or you do not. Um, we are all passionate within the Alumni Association to make this grow and to move forward, but we need your passion. We need to hear your thoughts and ideas. Just by being here tonight, you really have shown us that you are dedicated and passionate, and we're very grateful, so keep the conversation going. And I don't mean just tonight. Keep it going. Keep it going. Help spread the good word. Take pins. Give the pins away. We'll give you more. Um, but thank you again for being here, and please do join us on the first floor for the reception. Thank you to our folks online. We're grateful for you joining us at the comfort of your home or wherever. Um, and thanks to all of you. Have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.